For 15 years, Johnny Depp has been regarded as one of the finest actors of his generation. Born in Kentucky, he moved to Los Angeles in his teens with the hopes of carving out a career in music. He started acting to pay the bills and soon landed the starring role on the television series 21 Jump Street. While he could have had a conventional career as a leading man, he has instead made a career of choosing unusual roles. Edward Scissorhands, Ed Wood, Donnie Brasco, and What's Eating Gilbert Grape. If anybody ever hits you, or even just lays a finger on you, what are you going to do, Barney? Hmm? You're going to tell me, and then I'm going to take care of it for you, right? And why will I take care of it? Gilbert. Hmm? So you're Gilbert. Because I'm Gilbert. Because nobody hurts Arnie, right? We came here to find the American dream. Now that we're right in the vortex, she want to quit? You must realize, man, we found the main nerve. That's what gives me the fear. Look. What? There's uh, two women being a polar bear. There's some beautiful thing. Why don't you give it to your wife? My wife? How am I going to give it to my wife? I ain't married. You got a girlfriend? Yeah, I got a girlfriend, yeah. So marry her. What I'm saying to you is you should give it to somebody that don't know any better because that's a fugazi. All right? Every day I got to do something rotten for my parents' sake and I'll cry for what I have to do. But not much, though. One single salty tear is all they'll ever suck out of this crybaby. I am Don Juan, and if you will not medicate me for these 10 days, I will prove it to you. All right, and what if I don't believe you, Don Juan? Then I will take your medication. <laughs> Do we have an agreement? Do I have these 10 days to tell you my story? I'm about to tell you something that I never told any girl on a first date. But I think it's important that you know I like to wear women's clothes. Mm -hmm. I like to wear women's clothes. Panties, brassieres, sweaters, pumps. It's just something I do. His latest project, Sleepy Hollow, marks his third collaboration with director Tim Burton. I am pleased to have Johnny Depp back on this program. Now, when you watch that, first of all, you had never, you've never seen Gilbert Grape. I've never seen Gilbert Grape, no. Anything else in there you haven't seen, a movie that you have made? I haven't seen Sleepy Hollow yet. <laughs> Is that I'm right? Of, yeah, I'm kind of uh, mastic, masochistic in that way. I, I'm going to wait until the premiere to see it, which is really... It's, because you want scary. the joy of seeing it for the first time at the premiere? Yeah, well, not, joy or, or is the, not the word I would... I, <laughs> I, I mean, pain? I, yeah, I mean, if, if, if I could not see the movies, I think I'd be better off. I just, I, I get very uncomfortable uh, watching myself. It just, it just feels strange, you know? Well, do you like being an actor? I do, most of the time. <laughs> most of the time. I mean, there are, there are some occupational hazards that I, I could live without, but... Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I mean it's a good job. It's okay. Good. But I mean, is it is it I mean is it art and passion and all that for you, or or is it simply craft and like a good plumber, I'm going to do a good job and move well, on? Well, it's it's, I mean it's it's passion certainly. Art, I I I would say I would aspire to be able to do 
something that's considered art. I'm not sure that that can be done in the movie industry, the movie business, because of that fact. It's the movie business. There's Be commerce involved. Because of, they, of the demands that they make in terms of box office or their the assumptions about box office? Assumptions about uh, box office demands, about box office results, uh, return on the money, all that stuff. Things that really uh, are none of my business. You know? <laughs> I mean, when my job is done, it's done. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah. You set out to be a musician and you got into this for a lot of reasons and you, you are you know, yes. highly regarded. Oh, is it the downside of it the loss of privacy? Yeah, yeah, the loss of privacy, kind of, even more than just the loss of privacy, the sort of aggressive invasion uh, on, on your privacy, on your private life. Um, it's, it's very strange because you are treated in some circumstances as a novelty, and that's a very uncomfortable position to be in. I mean, mostly by this, particularly like the paparazzi, <clears throat> They have a tendency to, to be pretty aggressive. You're back with Burton. Yeah. Scissors Hand, uh, Ed Wood. Yeah. What else? And is this the third? Yeah, this is the third. Yeah. There is that kind of slant about you, which you and Burton share. Yeah, I think, yeah, we, we connect on, on, uh, on these kinds of levels. Yeah. But what other kinds of levels? Uh, I think we, we share a similar sense of humor. Um, for some reason, on this film, we got. We had a particular obsession with Georgie Jessel. Oh, heard about this, yeah. We, Give we, me your best Jessel. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Georgie Jessel here. Uh, it, we, we, it, it got so bad, I mean, our obsession with Georgie Jessel that literally they'd roll camera and the guy would do the sticks and I'd just be getting ready to walk into frame, you know, to, to, to begin the scene and suddenly I would hear, and action! <laughs> And it was Tim yes. doing George Jessel. And then, of course, at the end of the scene, cut! You know? So we were, yeah, we were sort of obsessed with George Jessel, and why aren't there people like George Jessel today? At this stage in a relationship where you both are on the same wavelength, where you've done several stuff before, mm. is there much communication about what you're doing and what he wants you to do and where you've married those two? Tim, Tim is particularly amazing in that way um, for an actor. He's a dream for an actor because he will he will give you suggestions and he'll plant certain seeds and then you take that and you use that as, as, a, as an ingredient. But he allows you complete freedom to create a character from the ground up. Uh, e e even there were times I mean when, before we did scissor hands. He rehearsed everyone. He didn't rehearse me. He didn't really know exactly what I was going to do when I walked on the set. <laughs> Same thing with Ed Wood. He, yeah. I mean, I, I spent the first two weeks of Ed Wood and scissor hands, and in fact Sleepy Hollow, thinking that I was going to be fired. I was going to be replaced. Because I just thought, there's no way I can get away with this. There's just no way. But luckily, uh, Luckily, Tim, Tim was, was happy with the stuff, and, and I, I didn't lose my job. <laughs> you're, not, you're not serious. Oh, yeah, I swear. I swear to you. I swear to you. I can remember when we were doing scissor hands, we were living in this sort of resort, some kind of country club thing, and uh, there was a knock at the door. This is like 1990. There was a knock at the door one afternoon, and everybody was off rehearsing. And there were two young girls at the door, so I, I figured, well, they found me, and Maybe they want me to sign something. I don't know. You know, you get used to sort of conditioning. You know. So I opened the door. I said, how do you do? And they said, hi. Uh, and they said, uh, is Tom Hanks here? Does he live here? And I said, what? They said, does Tom Hanks live yeah. here? And I said, no, not yet. <laughs> not that I know of. And I was convinced that Hanks would be replacing me. <laughs> I was convinced. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, it was one of the most frightening uh, moments in now, my uh, career. You don't seem to be the kind of guy that would have an insecurity in your body. I mean, you seem to say, take like life it. on my terms, and if you don't like it, fine. If you don't, I mean, you know. That makes more it. insecurities. <laughs> uh, no, I got plenty. I got plenty. But I, I, I do feel a kind of uh, need to, to, follow, to follow 
what it is I, I whatever it is I'm after. I mean, I, I need to bash on into what into the direction that I'm going. Uh, yeah, it's it's important to not to do as to do what you want without much sure. compromise. Sure, yeah. sure. I mean, uh, it, but at the same time, it's important to be a professional because other people and they have a certain element of accountability. And mm. uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, professional is a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Right. Not too late, all that yeah, stuff. well, that's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. You know, I mean, you, we owe it to our fellow. Oh, you bet. Yeah, you got. Uh, yeah, camera when, people when you directors. got uh, you got a hundred people sitting on the set, waiting for you. Uh, yeah, you get the long face when you arrive. No, I, I don't. I, I don't do that. You don't do that. All right, Ichabod Crane. Um, that we're gonna tell the story. I mean, we know the story, but in this case, he plays. You are a police constable. Yes. Who come up to Sleepy Hollow to do what? Ichabod, basically Ichabod Crane in this version of Sleepy Hollow is a constable in New York City. And he is not well liked by his fellow officers and by his, the, uh, the, uh, the brass. Pray tell why. He's sort of a, he fancies himself a kind of, uh, ahead of his time. So he's invented these kind of, forensic, you know, for, for forensic studies, and he's invented these sort of yeah. tools and things like that. And he's a pretty self-righteous type guy, and he's not liked at all. So he's sent away to Sleepy Hollow to investigate these uh, sort of gruesome murders. He's also and a coward. He's a complete coward, yes. <laughs> he's a total coward, yeah. He's, yeah. All right. Uh, here is the scene from Sleepy Hollow where... Uh, Ichabod Crane is being briefed on the murders in Sleepy Hollow. Here it is. It's a great cast of people. I mean, Michael, the cast. great Gabon. Michael Gambon is a, a genius. Yeah. 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 All those guys. I mean, walking into that room, that was one of the first days of shooting, maybe the first day of shooting. And walking into that room with Michael Gambon, Miranda Richardson, Richard Griffiths, Jeffrey Jones, Ian McDermott, it doesn't get better. I mean, it just doesn't get any better than that. Yeah. You learn from them? Absolutely. You become a sponge and soak up as much as you can, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when Mike was here, he came by on, on the stage. I mean, he's just amazing. Yeah, he's also completely out of his mind. He's one of the funniest people I've ever <laughs> met in my life. He's totally out of his mind. See, I would think that would make movies fun. The mm -hmm. idea, if you can come together on a project with a group of people, with a common purpose, you know, it's not a lifetime. Mm and engage in something together. Yes. You know, eat together, have fun together. You bet. Be committed to the craft of doing it well. Mm. Bring in a reservoir of experience and talent and Oh, it's skills. unbelievable. I mean, I, I, th I consider every film that I do, a, a, you know, it's, it's an education. To a certain extent, it's all, you're always learning. Yeah. Take a look at this. This is another scene from Sleepy Hollow. I want to get to a scene with uh, Christina Ricci. Who does she play? Uh, Katrina Van Tassel. The daughter of uh, Michael Gambon. Okay, here it is. Roll tape. As I was watching her, said, you first met her when she was nine. Nine years old, yeah. <laughs> She's now 19. She's now 19. <laughs> there are love scenes in this movie. There are intimate scenes, and, uh, yeah, it's, it was odd. It was, yeah. uh, it was uh, you know, it was uncomfortable because I still have that, that image of the, you know, eight, nine-year-old girl in my head, so, you know. It was uncomfortable, but yeah. the, you know we sort of yeah. laughed about yeah. it and got over yeah. it. Boy, quickly. she's hot too, isn't she? I mean, and I don't mean hot in the she, sexy scene, but she's hot in terms of her career. She's doing very well. Yeah, she's she's making good choices, and uh, yeah, she's doing really well, Christina. Speaking good of choices, <laughs> have you made good choices in your judgment? I mean, do you look back and say, "Look, I did what I wanted to do. It's defining of me." But if you don't, you might have wanted me to do something else, but that's not where I was in my own head. There were other things that I probably should have done. Not from my perspective. I mean, from my point of view, I did the right things. Every th every film that I've done, I'm happy that I that I made that choice. I don't have any regrets whatsoever. But I mean, in terms of uh, sustaining um, a box office, you know, bankability, I should have done a few other things that I didn't do. But I'm glad I didn't do them. I mean. Because it wouldn't have been you. Yeah, it would, I would, it would have been for the wrong reasons. I did, uh, I, everything that I've been lucky enough to do, I did for the right reasons. 
most people would say that if you'd wanted to be a quote, and maybe you are, I don't quite understand these terms, but if you'd wanted to be a leading man in a traditional way, it was yours there for the taking, and you didn't want that. I think, I think any, any actor, given a certain amount of success or given a certain amount, you know, you know somebody hands you the ball, you run with it. Um, any actor could do that. Um, but I, it's not me. It wasn't me. I mean, my, my heroes are, you know, Lon Chaney is one of my, one of my heroes, one of the greatest character actors of all time. I, I would prefer, I, I aspire to, to be thought of as a character actor or to be, to be a character actor. I think that's much more interesting. Do you think you'll be successful in that or that the way the system works will just grab you and make you, you know, into whatever, despite... In other words, it's a little bit like James Dean may have said, I don't want to be whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But, mm -hmm. you know, but the system is going to take it because it's so appealing in some ways. Well, the system, the industry... Um, I was on a television series for three, three or four years, mm -hmm. about four seasons, and I was, without question, a product. Not my own product. That was somebody else's product. And they shoved me down the throats of America and it was a very uncomfortable situation and I swore to myself that when I got off that show I uh, I would do what I wanted the way I wanted to do it um, so and I stick to that so, I mean I if if I had to do the leading man things just to just to continue to be an actor to continue to work Nah, I'd rather I'd rather go back to pumping gas. Really? Yeah, definitely. I mean, look at it. As I said, it's a great job. It's one of the best jobs I've ever had. But I mean, there are other things. There are other things. Can't you do both? I can't. I, mean, it would be I don't so want to. It's tasteful that you wouldn't want to do it. I just don't want to go out and make Hallmark film Hallmark cards, you know. And I just I just don't see the point. If if something's been done a million times, why do it again? try something different, you know. Just try it. I mean, the worst, you, you get shot down. But bad, bad characters are more interesting. Bad characters? Yeah. I don't know what bad means, but more... I mean, ca characters that, that may be damned or something. Uh, damaged. Damaged. Okay, damaged. Better. Yeah. Damaged characters are, are more interesting. Yeah, because but that's, good. that's what's great about, about the work everybody's damaged well, everyone is damaged on some level and I, I, I'm fascinated with human behavior I'm, I'm fascinated with the flaws of the human being I mean I'm just fascinated with it I mean ticks and yeah of course just character flaws yeah I'm, I'm fascinated with them. <laughs> it's, it's a strange thing because the, the greatest thing you can do as an actor I think is to be a, an observer and at a certain point, something bizarre happens, and you're not able to observe in public anymore because everyone is observing you. So that's a, that's a little bit, that's a kind of a danger. Aren't you already there? Sorry? Aren't you already there? I mean, this fascination with you, you know, has, in a sense, prevented you from... from I mean, you know, they're lining up outside the hospital while you're waiting for your daughter to be born. Yes. Yeah, there was about 25 paparazzi outside, and it was like... You know, it was like remora fish. You know, these, these blood suckers. You could, I just couldn't believe it that they would try to take something so sacred and and so special. I mean, your first child born happens one time, obviously. Uh, and these these people outside, they they are trying to turn it into some kind of a circus, and that's so unfair. I mean, Lily Rose, uh, mine and Vanessa's daughter. Our first trip out of the hospital, she was five days old. We had to escape down through the garage and out, and we were being chased by paparazzi. And we got to her parents' house, and we closed the gate, and we thought we were home free, and we were just about to get out of the car. This is our first trip in a car back, you know, home. We were just about to get out of the car, and suddenly a helicopter swoops down above the yard and just hovered there for like 10 minutes. 
I mean, it's a weight in the car. I told you to stand your up. I mean, it, that's bizarre. That's, that's no way to live your life. That is no way to live your life. The interesting thing is you were telling me, I thought, you know, has nothing changed since the tragedy of Diana? No. No. I don't think, no. They are aggressive beasts. They're aggressive beasts, and they're after one thing. And that's... The shot. The shot and money. It's a greed thing. I understand. On, for some, it's a... It's a uh, you know, it's the bread and butter. Okay, I, I'm with you on that. But, uh, but an innocent. Yeah. There's pure no middle ground child. either, I guess, is it? I mean, no. there's no middle ground. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm not no, the stuff you that kind of stage, but there's a middle ground where you can say, okay, look, the two of us will come out with our baby. Mm. You know, just let's do one shot and then let's stop this but madness. That, see, that I'm not going to give them. I, you won't give them that. I won't give them a shot of, of my baby, of our baby, because she, she didn't ask for the attention, the weirdness. She didn't ask to be photographed. You know, she's, it's not fair to her. It's not fair to put her through a three-ring circus and make her jump through hoops. It's not fair. For me, for Vanessa, okay, you get the shot, get the shot. I will do everything in my power to avoid it, but you get the <laughs> you shot, get you get the shot. <laughs> so um, this will be a contest. Yeah, you know. Uh, but, I mean, I, I've, I have in the past approached them, you know, uh, in as gentlemanly a fashion as I can. You know, I've asked the incident in London, I, I asked them, I said, please, I don't want to be what you want me to be tonight. I don't want to be Johnny Depp for you tonight. So we're celebrating, it's a special night, please leave us alone. And they were, they were very aggressive. And Just they were, in that voice, I bet, yeah. It, about, about, about like yeah. that, and they were aggressive, and uh, you know, I had to, I had to uh, take another route. Well, what did you do? I, just so happened that there was this sort of a, uh, you know, piece of wood about yay big, about that round, and uh, I guess the the restaurant used it as a, a door jam, and uh, uh, picked it up and uh, and uh, smacked one of them on the hand with it, and I and I went outside and I said, now, please, take my picture, please, because the first one, the first flash that I see. Is the recipient of this? Let's have it. Let's do it. Let's have our photo shoot. Right. What not, happened? Not one picture was taken until the police arrived. About ten minutes later. Then they all wanted to photograph that. And they did. That's when the that's when the uh, that's when the flashes went off. <laughs> but it was it was a yeah, and it's not it was funny. A it's, I know I'm smiling because no, you're retelling a, of it. It is. was in fact a beautiful moment. It was a beautiful moment because it showed them for what they really are. Um, and it was a kind of poetry to it. It was beautiful. Uh, I don't regret it at all. If I mean, if I have to do it again, that kind of thing, I would do it again. So when you were sitting in the jail for five hours, you said, it was a beautiful just, moment. Yeah, I just said to the cops, you know, <laughs> let me know when I can leave, you know. The cops were real nice. Yeah. In fact, it's funny that the jail cells over there are not called, uh, they don't call it cells, they call them custody suites, which I thought was very nice. Are they custody suites? They're cells. <laughs> but they, uh, they were real nice, the cops. In fact. I liked yeah. them. Oh, nice. you liked them, and so you got along with them, fine. Yeah, they, in fact, they understood. They said, you know, yeah. I, you, you know, shouldn't have to do this. Yeah. Endure this. Yeah. No. Man, this baby's great, though, huh? She's everything. The baby is everything. It's so amazing, my little family it's just so it's unbelievable it's it's uh i don't know it's the only th thing that's ever happened to me really the only thing everything else is smoke this is it this is uh real life did you see the birth i was there yeah <laughs> unbelievable i mean you i i've been since may 27th when my daughter was born I have been floating. I smile constantly, which I never did before. Yeah. And you never imagined you would have it this kind of... N no, you know, you, know you, you can never... Everybody tells you and you know, you know what they're experiencing, you know it's going to be something, you know, sublime, but no, you just don't... You can't imagine until it 
actually happens when you when you see this little angel arrive. It's uh, I mean, for Vanessa and I, it was we the both of us have just been floating ever right. since. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Lily Rose. Lily Rose. And why Lily Rose? Uh, I don't know. We just like the name. It was the only. In fact, it was the only name that we we'd come up with for uh, for a girl. Um, Lily Rose. We wanted. We, we both loved the name Lily. I think her mom suggest Vanessa's mom suggested Rose. The Rose part. Yeah. Um, my mom's name is Betty Sue. And we wanted something that sounded kind of like Betty Sue, that sort of southern thing. So Lily, yeah, that's great. Yeah. And then Melody, which is her middle name, was uh, after uh, uh, Serge Gainsbourg, yeah. a song called Melody Nelson. So, the, so her name is Lily Rose Melody Depp. Depp. Yeah. <laughs> She's something. Man, you really look happy. I'm floating. I, I've, I've just, uh, yeah. It's, it's. I've never ever in my life. Uh, I haven't lived before that day. I, I was not alive. I existed. I imagine that I drew breath and exhaled and all that stuff, but I don't have any particularly, you know, fond memories of it. I mean, I, I don't think I took a real breath until my daughter was born. It's great to have you here. Thank you. It's a pleasure, as always. Thank you. Uh, Johnny Depp, the movie is Sleepy Hall. It opens nationwide on November 19th. Uh, we'll do this again soon. So. Thank you. Let's do it. Thank you very much for joining us. Johnny Depp, the movie again, Sleepy Hollow, opens nationwide November 19th. Thank you for joining us. See you next time. <laughs>